Good morning and welcome to Thursday morning prayer. And it's been quite a miserable morning and bitterly cold, but I think we're going to have some sunshine. I can see a reflection on the dovecot. And it's welcome to our dear sister Sue and Jan. And whoever else is not logged in, you're welcome. But first things first, let's light a candle not only for global unity and peace, but for the people of America, where many are struggling to come to terms with the election of Donald Trump. So we, we dedicate our morning prayers twofold this morning. The first, of course, is for the Frank Clara Abbey of Peace, Love and Compassion. And the second is for the people of America, where many feel let down feeling angry, frustrated by the choice of president, but maybe God has a plan in this. We don't know. Sometimes it's best to hand everything over, as I've discovered recently. So we light this light and we call on our Father, Mother, God. We call on the great ancestors, the ancestors of America, the great chiefs of the Native American Indians who respected the land and the earth. We call on the great spiritual teachers of that land and the men and women of the Christian tradition who gave their lives and who became martyrs for unity and peace. Amen. And this morning our prologue reads of our, excuse me, our morning communions, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father Mother God, the earthly mother and all the great masters, and reverence to the holy pure and saving teaching, and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Thursday morning we commune with the angel of water saying, angel of water enter my blood and give the water of life to my whole body. And as you say this, you contemplate the waters of earth in rain, rivers, lakes, seas, or anywhere. And the currents of the angel of water are left intensifying and directing the circulation of the blood. And I see that our dear sister Jan is babysitting a 12-month-old baby called Josh, who appears to be into everything. So good morning, Josh. And we wish you a, a blessed day with your grandma, Jan. Our, our opening prayer reads, O loving Christ who died upon the tree of life, each day and each night we remember your love. In our lying down and in our rising up, in life and in death, you are our health, you are our peace. Each day and each night we remember your forgiveness bestowed on us so gently and generously. Each day and each night may we be fuller in love with you. And now we have our first reading this morning, and it's from the little UCB booklet. And the theme really is fruit are just leaves. In the Christian Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 21 verse 19 we read, he found nothing but leaves on it. So let's read on and see what it's saying. The Bible says, as he was coming back to the city, he was hungry and he saw one single leafy fig tree above the roadside. He went to it, but he found nothing but leaves on it, seeing that in the fig tree the fruit appears at the same time as the leaves. And he said to it, never again shall fruit grow on you and the fig tree withered up at once. Perhaps you're thinking that's pretty harsh treatment. After all, it wasn't the tree's fault that it didn't have any figs. 
So why did Jesus curse it? You'll find the answer in these words. Seeing that in the fig tree the fruit appears at the same time as the leaves, when Jesus saw leaves on the tree, he'd a right to expect fruit. And when there was none, he cursed it for being a phony, while giving off the impression that it was the real thing. There's an important lesson here for each of us. Be careful that you don't display an impressive array of leaves without actually bearing fruit. It takes more than a bumper sticker on your car, a Jesus pin in your label, and a big Bible under your arm to influence and win others to Christ. The Bible says when the Holy Spirit controls our life, or our lives, he will produce this kind of fruit in us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, compassion, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. That's the kind of fruit people can see, touch, taste, and enjoy. And it's the kind God wants to see manifested in your life today. But because we're human, and I know I'm human, there are times when we look out from our little monastery without walls, we may even go onto the internet and watch some various YouTubes of some amazing Christian gospel singers or preachers. And then suddenly you find that they've created a dual personality where they're not really what they say they are. And I guess that's life. You, you come across so many lovely people they say one thing and they do the opposite, like many going into the church. They start off with the right intentions, but the system seems to get to them. The same with the senators in America who go in to the White House. The same with our own MPs who go into government. They have the right attitude to start with, but then the system changes their outlook on life and some become quite greedy and controlling. But let us ask ourselves today, where do I stand in the presence of God? Is there anything in my life, in my heart, in my dealings with others that needs to be brought to the Lord? Is there something I'm running away from, something I'm afraid of? It's always best to let it out and to give it to the Lord in prayer. That was quite a challenging reading, wasn't it? Our next reading that I'm guided to read to you this morning is Epistles Now, and it's a, it's a letter of St. Paul to the Romans, and it's letter number four. It may be very subtle, but most of us are still afflicted in some measure with an insidious work righteousness concept in respect to our relationship with God. Even in our proclamations of grace, we still come down heavy on the side of the law. Mm. The assumed do's and don'ts of the Christian life. From the very beginning of God's dealings with his chosen people, even through such leaders as Abraham and David, our great God made it quite clear that his acceptance is not the result of good works on part of his creatures, but, in, but his own incomprehensible, incomparable love. We are so apt to tie our faith onto certain acts that we do to rituals and ceremonies and sacrifices that we engage in, whereas these activities are not without value. They may nullify faith altogether and leave one with the kind of righteousness that is unacceptable to God. 
God's promises to Abraham and his descendants, we are the spiritual descendants of Abraham. We're not to be given as a reward for those who measured up to laws and requisites. If God's love is a reward rather than a gift, then what would be the purpose of or use for faith? <clears throat> Excuse me, the law of God summed up in the commandment to love God with our whole beings and our fellow beings as ourselves is important to our existence here on earth. This kind of love, however, is impossible unless we are clothed in God's righteousness. His saving love is revealed through the redemption of Jesus Christ and granted to all who accepted this Christ as Saviour and Lord. We are to embrace the righteousness that saving love by faith and then to act upon it to recognize our obvious inability to measure up to the demands of the law, to claim our freedom from sin's condemnation and eternal consequences, and live as the true sons and daughters of God. It was the faith of men like Abraham and David, their acceptance of God's order and purpose, and their reliance upon his gracious promises that assured them of God's infinite love. We are even more fortunate because we have the resurrected Christ, God's beloved Son, who demonstrated God's great love for his human creatures and who became the means by which every one of us can experience that love and know that we belong to him forever. So let us just come as we are in our woundedness, in our brokenness. Some may have had a pretty restless night, worrying. I know listening to Radio 5 Live in the night, you could hear many of the Americans, a lot of the young people, just voicing their anger. And here in the UK, when some were interviewed, they were distraught that Hillary Clinton didn't win. So we hand over all that weighs us down today as we come now to our morning intercessions. And we come to our little booklet, our little prayer booklet from Iona, as we read, Life be in our speech, truth in what we say. The love Christ Jesus gave be filling every heart for me. The love Christ Jesus gave be filling me for everyone. Let us pray now for this coming day and to follow the Lord Christ more closely and more fully. So let us be still just for a moment as we bring whatever may be troubling us, ailing us, in the stillness of this moment. Let us invite, invoke, and call upon the Lord Christ, our beloved brother, teacher, and mentor, who is the incarnate Son of God, back into our lives. We pray to our Father, Mother, God, who sent their Holy Spirit to bring new life to the hearts of us all. Lord, send the light of your Spirit today upon all who are gathered here and who may watch this recording at a later time. Upon the whole people of our world, especially in those places where many are discouraged and disillusioned, such as in America, with the recent presidential results. Blessed are you, the source of all life. All creation rightly gives you praise. Through the resurrection of your beloved Son, the world is filled with light. And through the gifts of your Spirit, may your light shine out across the universe. Through your Holy Spirit, Lord, 
the early disciples remembered all that you taught them. Pour out your Holy Spirit today on each one of us gathered here and on all men and women of every creed, denomination and belief known to man, that they may be faithful to that teaching. Light of all the nations, look upon those who live in darkness, open their hearts to accept you as the one true God of all, the one who is. And we just bring the whole family of God. We bring our migrants and refugees. We bring the crises in Syria, in Iraq. We bring the problems of all the world, all the countries of the world. We pray today for, for peace, peace within the heart of each child of God. And we pray especially today for the little ones, the innocent ones, and we pray for our sacred earth. So let us now pray the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespass, as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. Lead us not astray, but protect us from the forces of evil, negativity, and despair. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we're just going to pray a simple prayer, or two, the first is from Jalal ad-Din Muhammad Rumi. Your task is not to seek for love, but merely to seek and find all the barriers within yourself that you have built against it. And now we pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Breathe on us, O breath of God. Fill us, your child, with life anew that we might love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. Touch my life that I may see you in everything that lives, that moves and has its being from you this day. Empower me to live in the present moment, seeking only your love and your light. Amen. Now we come to the closing blessing. Bless to me, O God, the earth beneath my feet. Bless to me, O God, the path on which I go. Bless to me, O God, the people whom I meet. O God of all gods, bless to me my life. And as I come to blow out this light, we thank the Lord Christ for enveloping each one of you and all our requests and the many who have asked for our prayers and those whom we have promised to pray for, that they will be touched by the Lord Jesus' love. Amen. So now we say, go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum, om shanti, solo di caritas, salam alaikum. And may the peace of our God reign supreme in your heart this day, and that you will know that you are loved, regardless of your shadows or your past. And I thank you for being here, and I look forward to your company again soon. So, if it's your bedtime, sleep well. But if it's your day like ours, I wish you a blessed day. God bless you.